the, in the class and uh, your participation is, is very well received and also will be, uh, you'll benefit from it, okay? So, uh, I remember from last class, somebody told me to use neutron. So we can use neutron porosity, right? Usually in well logs, that's called N phi from neutrons. Uh, what else can we use to measure porosity? Because there are several methods to use porosity, but they are all the same, and they use the same way as we're going to do with the general workflow later on. Density. Density, you can use density too, right? Uh, if you know the mineralogy of the rock, and you know the pore fluid, you can also use density to calculate porosity. Any other one? You could use cores. You could use core for calibrations, right? Uh, well, what else? <coughs> there is this one very common that, that we were missing. Gamma? Uh, gamma, gamma, well gamma density, porosity is measured with gamma rays. Sonic logs? Sonic logs, yes. Sonic logs, the velocity of fluids it's lower than velocity of minerals, so with sonic logs, you can also uh, measure porosity. All right, so let me tell you what the workflow then is going to be to uh, calculate pore pressure. Uh, you're going to do this in the homework. I'll, I'll show an example in a bit. But these are the steps that you have to follow. And for many calculations, the step always is going to start by calculating the total vertical stress. That's the first thing that you have to do. That's the easiest one. In exams, most of the time, this is something that you have to do onshore and offshore. So uh, I, I encourage you uh, to learn how to do this very well, OK? All right. Uh, the second thing that you're going to do is to Uh, read porosity and based on porosity you calculate the value of effective vertical stress which if you work out this equation over here if I'm just rewriting the equation is going to be negative the natural logarithm of the porosity at the given depth divided the initial porosity divided the parameter beta. It's, it's the same equation. <coughs> the parameters beta and theta are uh, uh, not something that I'm going to give you, so it's something that you know. The porosity is going to be some, it's going to be something that in reality will come from a, a well log, uh, but I'm also going to give you the homework. Uh, <coughs> three, uh, just determine pore pressure, which is equal to SV minus sigma V. Uh, this one, it appears it's a negative value, but, but don't, don't be fooled because this logarithm is going to be negative. So negative and negative is going to be positive. So all of these are going to be positive values. You know what is total vertical stress. You calculated what is the effective vertical stress. And you now uh, are going to be able to calculate what the pore pressure is. And that's it. That, that's all you have to do. And I'll tell you uh, where you have to apply this. All right, so uh, this is okay. So this is the problem num number three. Uh, it's a problem. Uh, offshore and you know what is the water depth 
And for this case, uh, first of all, I'm asking you to calculate the total vertical stress with a density which is variable, okay? So in the section from zero to 500 meters, it's just water, or it's uh, actually salty water, right? That's why the density is a little bit higher. At 500 meters starts the sediment, and uh, it goes from the density of water to a density which is higher and includes uh, some sediments. All of this is a region where there is no overpressure and there is no clay. And you see how the density increases, right? And for this last part from 1,200 to 2,000 meters, now I give you porosity. And with this porosity, uh, you can calculate what is the pore pressure with the method that we just saw. Okay? Um, so, I like to, uh, I, I see you guys, I see some computers, but not many. Um, the, the homework is due on Friday. I, I strongly encourage that you start uh, working on the homework. So, because you'll see you have some questions, but then I'll be glad to answer those on Friday. So on Friday, we'll make it like a little bit more applied, okay? But you may start working on this, and uh, the sooner you do, again, the more questions you're going to have on Friday, and the uh, shorter it's going to take to solve the homework. Uh, you don't want to be freaking out about solving the, the homework on Friday at 9 p.m., right? So uh, let's try to solve it all together on Friday at noon. Uh, this one is going to be a little bit harder, uh, but uh, we'll, we'll get to that one too. But again, uh, problem number one, super easy. Uh, problem number two, uh, easy too. Three, a little bit more complex, but uh, you have to use the, proce the procedure that we just discussed, and you'll see it's not that difficult. And you need to do some numerical iteration here. Please use Excel or something else for this. So don't do it manually. Uh, I encourage you, to, however, to program this on your own because although I'm not going to ask you something like this in an exam, uh, you need to know how to do that, how to solve that, uh, if you have to do it in paper. It's not going to be as long as this, but it may be a, a shorter version of and start looking at this one because uh, you'll see it, that it's not that easy. All right? Oh, and I have a little bit of help about this. If you go uh, here to look for the files, you will see that these are the two files that you need. Okay? But uh, if you look at this LAS file, it's a little bit hard to read and uh, it requires sometimes a few more skills to get data out of here, but you can do it. I know you can do it. If you want to do it, there's a the data. If you want to take a shortcut, if you go to undergraduate homework, homework number two, I have the same file, but a lot simpler, just depth and uh, here these are velocities and bulk density, okay? So you can, you can use uh, this one, the shorter version, or the LAS version, which is the normal. They, they are the same. This one is just uh, summarized in the region that you need. Uh, one more thing, the, the log file starts at 1800 feet. But that doesn't mean that there is nothing above 1,800 feet, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you to assume that everything above the point that you do not have data, which is, uh, let me find it, right here. Everything above 1,887, assume it has a density, specific gravity of 1.823. And this is a well-bored data from 
what was your name? Uh, it was in Louisiana. Uh, black and Mines, Parish, Louisiana. So this onshore, okay? So also you know that there is, there is, uh, close to the coast, I don't remember what, but, but assume this is onshore. Don't, do not consider any, any weight of the water. Okay, so, uh, any question so far uh, before I move to another topic? No? Um, all right, so we're gonna talk about probably the most important topic that we get over and over uh, with time throughout the course. Uh, we know pore pressure. We know total vertical stress. Now, we are going to go after horizontal stress. And actually, there are going to be two. So it's going to be horizontal stresses. All right, let me start this topic with an example. <coughs> We're going to go offshore again. I wish I, I, wish I go uh, to the beach as often as I do in reality, as I do in classes. I don't. Uh, so let's say that we, we have a, uh, a pipe, and uh, well, before we, we put the pipe on the on the sea floor, uh, and here's where the example comes. If I blow this uh, balloon, what is going to be the shape of the balloon? It looks like a stupid question, but you'll see it, it, it has some meaning. So it's going to be spherical kind. Uh, let's see, I can blow. It's spherical, right? What, why is it spherical? What, what, what does that mean? Um, the pressure internally is pushing equally. Okay, against. So the pressure inside is pushing equally. But it's pushing against. Against the container itself, the shape on the container. Okay, uh, but the, sh the shape is deformable, but now the container is pushing against what? The atmosphere. The atmospheric pressure, right? And the atmospheric pressure, because this is a fluid, this is a gas, is the same in all directions. Because it's the same in all directions, uh, the shape of this is, is a balloon, uh, it's a spherical. It's not that much a spherical now because of the balloon itself, because it's a little bit harder here towards the, the, the bottom, but, but it's more or less spherical, right? Because mainly the pressure around the balloon is the same in all directions. What about if I were to uh, inflate the balloon here now on the seafloor, would it be a, a balloon? Would it be something else? What do you think? It's gonna shrink underwater. Okay. Uh, no, no. I, I'm not going to take the balloon uh, <coughs> to the seafloor. I'm just going to start blowing the balloon here. So my my question is whether well, well, the shape is going to be still spherical. Still spherical. Why? It's the same situation with higher pressure. It's, it's, uh, it's the same situation with higher pressure, but still the, the pressure of the water is the same in all directions, right? So if I were to inflate the balloon somewhere over here, it's going to still be spherical. So uh, let, let me zoom this somewhere over here. So the zoom of that is still going to be something spherical because the pressure is going to be 
the same in all directions. Shouldn't the pressure be higher uh, the lower we go? Yes, but that doesn't mean if the pressure is higher in here, I just need to put a higher pressure inside the balloon to blow it. But still, I can blow it. As long as the pressure is higher than the pressure outside, I can do that. No, I mean, so we'll, it would be a little bit deformed since the weight of the water causes the pressure to be higher. Um, oh, OK. Water. Well, I mean, if I were to inflate, inflate a giant balloon that goes from here to there, then, yeah, the shape is going to be a little bit no, no, spherical. But I'm assuming the balloon is very small. Uh, compared to the depths that we're dealing with. All right, so easy so far. The question now is, what about if I go through the water, I cross the sea floor, and I get to some location where there is, there is rock, there are sediments, and I want to inflate the balloon here. What is the shape going to be? Oval. What? Uh, oval shape. Oval shape? Uh, why, why oval? Because of the difference between maximum and minimum stress. OK, yeah, yeah, you're, you're touching a, a key point over there. Um, any, other, any other suggestion? The shape of the balloon, what is going to be? No? Well, the, the answer is going to be it depends on what is the state of the stress in the subsurface. And the main difference between a solid and a fluid is that a solid can shear, can bear shear stresses. And because it can bear shear stresses, it can bear stresses which are different in different directions. So in general, we're going to have a vertical stress, which is going to be different than two other horizontal stresses. That for now, let me call it, this one is the maximum total horizontal stress 